Cliff. Hi, Brent. How, How are, are you, you doing? Nice to see you again. Good to see you too. Well, some organizations like to say they've broken the mold, but here, I don't think Ohio History Connection has done that. No, Brent, uh, these are all from the Erlenbush Ice Cream Store. These are ice cream molds, and then these are candy molds. Uh huh. And then these are iron rosettes, which would be used to make tiny little bite-sized funnel cakes. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Can we get these now? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. The company went out of business in 1957, but they started an operation in 1859. Wow, they lasted a long time. Where were they? At 456 South High Street, which is at the corner of Livingston and High. Oh, wow. So that's uh, right in the heart of the city. And uh, they're making ice cream in 1859 without refrigeration, without cooling and all that kind of thing. How'd they do it? Well, they would use ice that they harvested from the Scioto River, and they would store the ice uh, through the year in uh, ice houses underground. And uh, they would uh, crush the ice and then use salt, which helps to release right. the, the coldness more readily. And they would make the ice cream in small batches. Just, just like we do today, churning a tub of ice cream. Exactly. Wow, well, they went to a lot of trouble, but anybody who's had ice cream knows it's worth it. <laughs> well, it was uh, supposedly quite delicious, and but it was uh, something that you would have for special occasions. Mm -hmm. Was ice cream different in, in the 1850s than it is now? Probably you could get something very similar at uh, smaller shops like uh, Grater's or uh, Jenny's, mm -hmm. the same kind of very uh, rich, mm -hmm. Uh, heavy cream ice cream. So not only was it good ice cream, but it was also kind of artfully and playfully presented. Exactly. In all these shapes. What strikes you from these shapes here? What's this tell you? Well, I like the fact that they uh, were made for holidays all, all year round. So like even for Christmas time, you wouldn't think of necessarily of having ice cream during cold weather, but obviously they had some Santa Claus molds. So they're really quite detailed on the interior. Yeah. So you would have somebody hand packing these, I guess, and then pushing them together and... Exactly. Okay. And then in addition to ice cream, uh, it was a confectioner's. Uh, so they uh, sold uh, candies and these are made for marzipan, which people still make, it's um, almond paste ah. that they would stuff into this and then you'd uh, hand color with uh, food coloring. And this is what it looks like outside. And then these are, would make strawberries. Uh huh and you could make flowers and pears and all different types of uh, fruits and uh, flowers. This must have been a very popular store to have lasted that long. By all accounts, it was very well attended. In fact, people would travel for miles away just to come to Irwin Bushes. What was happening in that part of town at this time? Was that a busy part of town? It was right on the edge of what is now German Village, right uh, just to the south of downtown. And it was near to the canal, uh, not too far from where the National Road would make its jog. Uh, so it was uh, very well attended. Any idea about when they may have converted to a more modern way to make ice cream? With the uh, development of uh, electricity, mm -hmm. so that you had the motors to run the machines. But even after the development of uh, those uh, and the use of electrical motors, they still made their ice cream in small batches. When did big dairies get into the business of making ice cream? Any idea? As soon as uh, you had the ability to transport something perishable like this over long distances. You get some of that in the late 1890s when you would have refrigerated cars. They would use large blocks of ice. But then later on that would be expanded when you could use uh, electrical freezers that would keep uh, trucks and uh, boxcars cold over long distances. Now in the 1850s when this store starts, are people starting to have ice boxes in their houses yet? When do people start getting ice boxes? It would be a luxury. Um, for someone in the 1850s, wealthier people would have had them, uh, but um, by uh, later in the century it would be fairly common. And they were fairly common all the way through uh, to World War II. In sure. fact, um, it was till after World War II when most people had uh, electric refrigerators, even though they were available from the 1920s. Right. Yeah, I think you still think of during the Depression, kids following the ice wagon, you know, and getting a chunk of ice and that sort of thing. I suspect every now and then the staff here breaks this stuff out and for an office party fills these up with ice cream and uses them, right? <laughs> no, these are part of our permanent collections and uh, one of the things that uh, we do to preserve things is you don't use them in their original function. So you don't wear the garments, you don't play the musical instruments because you want to preserve them for many generations to come. Well, if you ever make an exception for these, let me know. I'll come back and help test them out, okay? All right then. Thanks, Cliff.